All right, so today we have Lance and Darlene again to help us with this podcast on unity. We're going to talk about unity in parenting and relationships. So this is kind of, you know, buzzword, code book word, unity. People can kind of define unity very differently. Um, But in kind of our discussion, we were talking about how does that translate from a marriage being unified into parenting? And so, Darlene, you were kind of, Mm -hmm. I guess, relating to the fact that you've seen the impact of a healthy marriage and how it affects the kids. And what is, talk to me a little bit about what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, it's, it's this word unity, it's important to unpack that a little bit okay. for, for you and your spouse um, and your relationship, um, because there's, there's all kinds of concepts that come into that Mm. um and a big one that we were talking about was the word agreement oh totally you know do you do we have to agree with one another Mm -hmm. in order to be in unity in order to be in unity and i think that was you know that's kind of a a, an uncomfortable word for me sure um because in in my in my upbringing agreement meant that one of one person in the mm-hmm. conversation loses. Mm. Um, so wow. if we agree, it means you're wrong and I'm right or vice versa. Wow. Um, and so looking for agreement mm-hmm. was, and, and that was one of the things that I picked up, you know, as the child of a divorced family Sure. was, okay, to keep peace and to have a healthy, mm. good marriage, mm-hmm. I need to always agree with him. Wow. Um, and which was really, when you're an independent person, that's totally. really hard to do. Totally. Um, and so as I learned, what, what, you know, processing through my own pain of divorce and mm-hmm. those things, mm-hmm. learning that. It's, it's more about unity, mm. about coming to a place where I can say this is how I feel about something, and he says this is how I feel about it, finding places of compromise, yep. understanding his values, mm-hmm. knowing what my values are, and being able to talk about those mm-hmm. to create unity mm-hmm. so that maybe while I may not agree with, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that the decision we're going to make Mm-hmm. Is a good one. That's good. But I come to a place where no, I will. Let's let's give it a try. Right. Let's let's go for it, and I'll be with you. Yeah. Like okay, yeah. if it if it fails, I'm going to be with you to clean up this mess. Yes. But you know, we I may not fully understand where we're going, but I'm right. trusting that you're leading yes. us in whatever mm-hmm. decision. And the wife can do that, and the husband mm-hmm. can take the role mm-hmm. in doing that. I know in our relationship, I took some of more of the parenting aspects Mm -hmm. when they're little kids were little and i've kind of leaned into lawrence more as parenting the teenage and adult kids because that's just tends to be his strength yeah so our result now is (laughs) she gets all of the baby videos and everybody's happy (laughs) i I get the phone call when people are i need to tell you about what's going on and and i get all the conflicts which is i mean we we love that they they but it is definitely it's it's definitely a difference and i Oh, up there, I was like, we have a very different relationship with our married mm. children. Yes, mm. yeah. right. Then yeah. they're like, I don't, I didn't get that ba- video of the baby, <laughs> but I know what's going on with the two of them and their business. Mm-hmm. Right, uh-huh. mm-hmm. it's so true. Well, and going back to the word, the co- kind of the agreement, I always mm-hmm. have kind of a, a somewhat of a negative uh, reaction to the word agreement because I felt yep. like I didn't have my independence or could right. think differently, and right. I wanted the freedom. To, to have my own thoughts or have my own opinion, but find that place of unity that we can come yeah. together in our uniqueness and our own thoughts and ideas, but find a place mm-hmm. that we can walk together in unity. Um, and so I love Danny Silk's, uh, the goal of communication is what? Understanding. Understand is not right. to agree. Mm-hmm. And I use that all the time because I remember early on in our marriage, I was like, we got to agree. And we'd stay up till yes. what, one o'clock in the morning because we had to be on the same page. And we had to think the yeah. same and we had to be, come to the same conclusion. I was tired. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. working. You just give up. It was not going to work ever. You win. Yeah. It wasn't. Somebody loses, you win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I love that. That created such, that statement created such influence and power in my mm-hmm. own mind personally mm-hmm. thinking I don't have to be an agreement I have right. to understand his position and we do have to come to a place of unity yes. whether that's in, in our a decision. marriage and decisions whatever right. decisions we make that's right and and then that can look really different day by day because we're growing and changing mm-hmm. um you know as yeah. people in our first in, in our, when we first got married this I, I it's the same kind of thing you know this idea of I never tied 
um, my in, my emotion to or in order for us to agree, somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. Mm -hmm. When the reality is, someone does have to submit their will. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true, right? So I so there are times, right? And when we first got married, Danielle's interpretation of submit to her husband was she just agreed with everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. Well, about three or four years into it. I felt deeply alone. Mm -hmm. I felt alone. I'm making decisions, and some yeah. of those decisions are failing. Now, I'm the failure. I'm the one leading my family into failure, and my wife is agreeable. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. not comfortable at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. And then we got through the, con you know, you know, someone worked with us, helped her get out of that, helped me make room for it, for her to come forward. Now her opinion, like, then it got really scary. Like, she's not agreeable anymore at all. Yeah. <laughs> Which required a whole lot of, you know, mm -hmm. required us to reshape what is my value? Mm -hmm. What am I valuing right now? Why mm -hmm. am I passionate? What's mm -hmm. the passion about? It's tied to a value. Right. And how am I going to communicate to understand? Yeah. yeah right. Cool. And those things, you know, I can spit them off, right? But they weren't natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But I will tell you, my, my commitment to staying in love with my wife and making yeah. sure that love was being produced in me was important. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to impress her. It was that I'm committed before the Lord to allow his love to grow in me. And he gave me a wife and she's helping me to grow in love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to be that. Right. I don't want to perform love. I don't want love to be an object. I want it to actually grow. I want to live in it and I want to understand it. So what it meant was where we disagreed, one of us is going to submit and walk out because we believe and we do believe this about each other now mm -hmm. that in the midst of failure, we will learn from it mm. and That's we're right. going to grow in it That's right. yeah. versus completely falling apart in the midst of failure where you let you said this was going to work. Right. And here we are. Now we're bankrupt and blah, blah, blah. You know, you all these think about all these unnecessary arguments. Yeah. Right. right. Like, I'm so sorry that happened. Yeah. Hey, listen, I missed it, but I need your help right now. Mm -hmm. well, I got to clean up this mess. Can you help me? Right. Mm. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean, you maybe you've seen these videos online of the. Um, Family that buys the glasses that solves the color blindness that a family member will have. Oh, have you yeah. ever seen yes. these? So yeah. they give this gift to the, I think of one, it was a dad and a grandfather, and mm. he's been colorblind his whole life, and they give him this gift, and he's not really sure what it is. And when he opens it, and they're like, no, put on the glasses, I mean, he gets weeping because yeah. he sees the world as it really is. Wow. That he couldn't see it that way for whatever reason. I think about a time in our marriage where we were emotionally colorblind mm -hmm. and we needed new glasses to see what really was because what we were seeing wasn't real. Nobody was seeing it the way we were seeing it mm -hmm. because we had faults, we had baggage, we had issues. I think we'd been married six or seven years maybe. And I yeah. said one day, we were talking and we'd said to each other, we're never going to get a divorce. Now, we had talked about that going into the marriage. For sure. Both of us coming from divorced homes. Mm -hmm. We're never going to get a divorce. But it was like six or seven years in, we sort of thought, saying we'll never get a divorce mm. is not the same as I'm committing <laughs> to build a healthy marriage and family. Right. Wow. Those are not the same thing. That's so true. Just avoiding one thing doesn't mean you're going to naturally fall yeah. into right. a healthy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's we true. Were, that was our emotional colorblind glasses mm -hmm. moment. Like, wow. whoa. We see something, and I'm really grateful that we could see it. It reminds me of the scripture. You know, the disciples are arguing. Like in Mark 3, they're arguing multiple times in the middle of that <laughs> book about who's going to be great. And Jesus keeps talking about the servant and the last and least and da-da-da-da. But when you think about after the resurrection, Jesus has ascended. Peter's the one that stands mm -hmm. to preach on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. But it says, and the eleven stood with him. Yeah. Wow. That picture from... Mm -hmm. 45 days ago, you're arguing about who's going to be the greatest. And yeah. in a month and a half, something powerful has happened. Yeah. That these 11, it, it, you would, I think it would be reasonable to mm. interpret with some sense of security and agreement or understanding mm. or unity. Mm -hmm. So good. Stand and say, we're standing with you. That's we so don't good. have to be the voice. That's right. right. You can be the voice. But then I think through as you read through Acts a little further. James was the leader of the elders in Jerusalem, yes. not Peter. It's true. Well, that's what it says. Peter might have been the one who preached on the day of Pentecost and had the recognition and the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a great sermon. Look mm -hmm. how powerful he is. Yeah. But later down the road, someone else is leading. James is the leader of the elders in the council of Jerusalem, not Peter. He's off doing something else. Mm -hmm. Everyone has permission to be powerful. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Everyone has permission. 
if you don't give people that permission, you can't have unity. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't have agreement. You can't have that oneness because right. everybody's hardwired to find their significant place at the Father's table mm -hmm. and to live that out, yeah. whatever that may look like for their assignment or for their calling. I think people have to be willing to look in the mirror and say, how is God at work in my life? And that's going to be below the yeah. waterline. Mm -hmm. He's going to get to the iceberg underneath mm -hmm. the water because mm -hmm. he because he knows that what he wants to do through your life and with your life, that right. will keep you from doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And for us, it was, hey, let's never get a divorce. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, hey, man, we're committed to this for the rest yeah. of our lives. Six or seven years, realizing we'd have a lot of dysfunctional behaviors. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of dysfunctional beliefs. Are we going to do something about that? That's good. And that agreement, that oneness, that place of understanding allowed each of us to say, you become powerful. I'll become powerful, and let's believe that will complement each other mm -hmm. yeah. and not compete with each other. I love that. I, love I that. think the statement for us was when we, but when we actually, when we started seeing each other, the question came up Is divorce an option? Mm -hmm. So for us, the language wasn't, We're never going to get a divorce. It's like that never becomes a reasonable solution mm -hmm. for whatever yeah. we're going on, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. we have to keep sifting through the tool bag because right. mm -hmm. divorce is not an option. We can't consider it. Right. So, so the, it like mm -hmm. that. So it's, I totally understand why, and I have mercy and I have empathy for people that have been divorced. This is not about that. This is about right. how do I how do I live my life in a way that's committed to the connection so that the love of God is accurately released in the home mm -hmm. so that my children now experience from their parents some sort of commitment to love. That's right. That love yeah. is no longer an emotion. It's an object. It's right. some. It's God. He's moving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and I had to think through. Okay, I believe the Lord is giving me this woman, but what I am experiencing is <laughs> a lot <laughs> frustration, fear. All this stuff yeah. is happening, and I have to decide. Okay. Well, divorce is not an option. Right. So, okay, okay. Now I have this hierarchy. Okay, what? Okay, I believe she's this. You said that. God, I'm not seeing that. How do I get there, Lord? What does that look like? How do I go back to remembering her identity and who she is? Because yeah. in that, the two of us, the two of us can come back to unity. Okay, mm -hmm. I believe this about you, mm -hmm. and, but we're not experiencing it. Yeah. How can we work through that? What's yeah. going on? And I think if, you know, just listening, the thought comes to me that that is the work of love. Wow. And we talk about you know marriage is hard work, <laughs> and and yes, it is. It's not loving. Always. It's not it's, hard work. It's loving. It's loving, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> she rebuked me off camera. With a sweat. Well, and she did it You're strong. Too, she said, it's, hard it's not hard. It's not hard. It's loving. It's loving. But I was I'll thinking about you. that. It's hard. <laughs> next time I say this is hard, oh, you'll be like, oh, no. It's oh, not. absolutely. Within We're going to have a lot of fun with weeks, it. Something will pop up. I'll remind you. This is hard. <laughs> this right. is hard. But I was thinking about, you know, marriage is, it's it's motivated by love. To, to keep that commitment yeah. is the work of love mm -hmm. that Ooh. isn't easy. But I was reminded of when Jesus went to the cross, he was motivated by love. <laughs> there was nothing easy about That's the cross. Right. That's right. But he it was sweat the most, blood. But it was the most loving mm -hmm. thing That's God so ever did for us. That is a fact. You know, and so when I, when, when I can position my marriage as a work of love. Yeah, that's good. That's and if, so Christ, good. if Christ was willing to go to the cross as that's a work right. of love. Figuring out how to love this man, mm -hmm. I'm not dying on a cross. You're not gonna yeah. go to yeah. No. Oh my gosh, no one's, that's no such one's a crucifying great me. That's so good. You know, but how do I be motivated by love mm. to do the work necessary? Yeah, to to demonstrate. And what is and what is love. the result? I mean, you were we were talking about this as far as the result in your kids and grandkids, yeah. and you're in children's ministry and, and yeah. lead a high, at a high level. Yeah, you're seeing that impact. Like, what right. does that unity in a marriage? What does that create? What are you seeing? Yeah, I see. You know. And, and we've talked even with our adult kids, you know, what is it like to have parents that stay together? So many of their friends, wow. their parents are not together, mm. you know. And my kids, we've been together 32 years. <coughs> 32. He's better at the math than right. I am. Married um, 32, yep. Married, married 32. 32. Um, but the, you know, and my, my daughter, who I process this the most with, will talk about the security mm. that that brings her. Mm -hmm. that her friends don't have. And she'll talk to her friends. What do you mean you don't have someone that, that encourages you and is for you and supports you and mm. cheerleads you, mm. you know? 
um, but having parents who are always there for her mm-hmm. and who are committed to one another wow. and right. to her. Wow. Right. You know, that, what, that level of commitment is something that she's noticing is not very present for a lot of people. Wow. What I just so. heard you, she asked the question is, what is the work of love in your life and how is it processed in your kids? And your <laughs> answer was the work of love drives security yes. in my children. Do we all agree with that? I'm not my kids. I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> Can somebody I, call I, Lance's I, kids in here? <laughs> Where are they? I, I would say they feel some measure. So I have a great therapist friend who tells me, reminds me all the time, and I'm grateful that he does. Every human being wants to be seen, soothed, safe, and secure. Mm. And I think, I hope we've done a good job at loving each other through That's difficulties, awesome. through disagreements, through arguments, through whatever. That we continue to role model to our children. We see you. Mm-hmm. You are safe here. Mm-hmm. You are secure here. Mm-hmm. And and we will comfort you. Mm-hmm. We will bring soothing to your life. Yeah. I think that's happened and happening based upon their willingness to bring vulnerable conversations right. back to that's us right. wow. in their own lives. Right. Wow. So when they come and say, I'm really struggling with this. I mm-hmm. want you to know this. What mm-hmm. should I do about that? Will you pray with me about this? Mm-hmm. That level of openness and transparency for my children, I think, says, yes, mm-hmm. they're secure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't you think that you've kind of role modeled maybe in front of your kids mm-hmm. where they feel the freedom or have the, the ability to realize I'm safe to Can to we argue in front of our kids? Be, Is that legal? Well, argue in front of our kids, mm-hmm. hold hands in front of our kids, yeah. kiss mm-hmm. Darlene in front of our we'll, kids. We'll dance. We dance, dance all the time. The we kids. make them uncomfortable. Big family yeah. dance. Yeah, no. Exactly. Because here's what we know they yeah. don't know, in part because their brain just hasn't awakened to some mm. of those things mm-hmm. yet, is that this is real life. And at some yeah. point, mm-hmm. you, as a 12-year-old or 8-year-old, or six, you're going to desire these things. You're going to be yeah. living this. And That's I want good. to give you a memory mm-hmm. <laughs> that might pop up for you to like, oh, I remember that one time. Yes, yeah. of course, awkward is my mom and dad. But they role modeled what, uh, what genuine love and joy Mm -hmm. in each other looks like and yes we love it's hard work it's this that but i think there's a genuine joy in each other i just enjoy darlene's company more than anybody else right Mm -hmm. and you know early on she's such an introvert and i'm an extrovert i verbally process use too many words (laughs) she never used any words i think the roles have flipped she gets in the car (laughs) about her day and i just listen and don't say much how was your day fine and uh-huh. <laughs> it's almost like we flipped. flipped. It's crazy. And I enjoy it. I love it so much. Like, oh, God, I don't feel so much pressure to fill the empty space with words. Because <laughs> Darlene will do it. I but I love it. Yeah. I love hearing that about her. So, And you, know, you ask a question that. in the car. What, what is a question? We've talked about Sometimes this. Sometimes we camera. ask, um, do you feel connected to me? Mm-hmm. Because... It gets back to a few things. One, I don't want our marriage on cruise control. Mm, right. Cruise control is nice for a long drive, um, but it's really dangerous if you're not paying attention to what's wow. going on around you. <laughs> so I don't want a cruise control marriage. Secondly, I, I, speculation assumption is dangerous. Mm. And so we just avoid mind reading and just will ask the most common and basic questions. And what I love about Darlene, she never... I rarely, if never, I don't think I've ever can recall a time. Aww. She has said, you should know me by now and know what I already think or what wow. I already want. I probably do 90% of the time know what she's thinking or what sure. she wants, but I can't afford a 10% miss. Mm. I don't want to mm-hmm. deal with that. So mm-hmm. just asking questions like, do you feel connected to me? Because she's busy, she's powerful, she's mm-hmm. gifted, she's talented, she's moving things forward. Mm-hmm. And I recognize that busyness is one of the great enemies of intimacy. Mm -hmm. So mental busyness, emotional fatigue, I've given a lot today. Mm -hmm. I would say the third thing is, am I giving you my leftovers? Do you feel Mm -hmm. like I'm giving you my leftovers? So so every day I'm giving my best to these people, Mm -hmm. but you and our youngest now at home, Luke, you're just getting the leftovers. And uh, every once in a while, that's probably fine. We can live on leftovers, but we don't want to do that every day. Mm -hmm. So those are a few questions that we'll Mm -hmm. try to intentionally work into our conversation. Mm-hmm. We I, This may f- fight the stereotypes because I've been around Christianity long enough. You need a weekly date night. We have not had a weekly date night in 30 years. Every night. Every night's a date night? <laughs> Every night's a date night in my mind. That's awesome. No night. I did not know this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, so we really don't. Because do our lives were busy. Unless she's working late. And because yeah. we had little kids and we couldn't afford babysitting right. and lots of things like that. 
time with you because you've had little kids or kids or friends. Mm -hmm. Time with you would be date night Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. that you just want to go get a coffee. That's the moment. So we found date night wasn't once a week for three hours, do something, which is fine. That that that, that works for couples. That's great. Do it. I just want to give couples the freedom who says that doesn't work for us because our lives are so Mm -hmm. busy between professions and kids and schools and after school. Make the moments of small moments, Mm -hmm. string them together, and you'll Mm -hmm. feel like Mm -hmm. while I want to date night and date you, I'm not having some overwhelming need Mm -hmm. to date you because the tank is empty. Right. The tank has stayed full. Mm-hmm. Through lots of little things throughout the day or the week or the month. Yeah. That's so good. It's realistic expectations. Mm-hmm. It's knowing what he can can do, what I can do. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the biggest things, and I'm so thankful for this, is over the course of 30 <clears throat> years of being together, we've always worked at the same place. Mm-hmm. So we have car rides together. That's right. Um, lunches, like, oh, are you free for lunch? Well, not today, but tomorrow. Oh, I'm free tomorrow. Okay, let's have lunch yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just that. That doesn't bother you? No. Wow. That's good. No, I think the same thing. We no, have, because we, we planned it in advance. Right. Yeah. There you go. But see, the idea, behind, the idea behind scheduling time with a spouse can be very offensive to someone else. Mm. But what I'm hearing you say is mm-hmm. you've learned enough about each other. Yeah. You, it, what he needs m- actually matters to you. Yes. It's not, it's not your actions toward him just mm-hmm. to get what you need. Right. So... What I've experienced from Darlene is a need for me to mature, mm. but maturity doesn't mean I become like you. Right. That's maturity so yeah. means I get to become me, mm-hmm. which cor- forces yeah. you to compromise. You may wish I were more spontaneous or more this or that, but I'm really good with a schedule. Now, in our unique case, she is too. But in some cases, I can imagine, because I've had him in my office, the wife, like, I just wish my husband were more spontaneous and more romantic. He's not going to be. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> You should have married that person if that's what you wanted. He's not going to be that. So you're wanting him to grow up, but you're wanting him to grow up. You want him to be like you. Mm. So you should have married yourself. Mm. That's not going to happen. So what do you need to die to that allows your spouse to become who God wants them to be? And trust that you can love that version Mm -hmm. of them as much as you love the version of yourself yeah and it's got to matter lance i mean i've obviously we've talked mm-hmm. about people we've we, i've had we've done marriage counseling i've listened to people and hearing people obviously unfortunately as a pastor sometimes people they show up in your office after they've already had years of traumatic oh yeah things right what we're talking Build about up. is behaviors that mm-hmm. actually sustain healthy and we've <laughs> learned over the years Right? Maybe we've crashed and burned. Somebody's picked oh, us back. Oh, we've crashed and burned, yeah. Correct, <laughs> right? So so they're not hearing that. But at the end of the day, the one thing that I would say I personally have to work hard on mm. is that my actions toward Danielle to go and attend to what she needs or who she, mm-hmm. or who she is cannot be tied to what I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's My good. love has to be genuinely right. faced mm-hmm. toward her, mm-hmm. even if I don't like her at the moment. Mm-hmm. Whatever's going on that's creating an irritation, the personality, the temperaments, anything that's happening. Right. I can never allow myself to approach her mm-hmm. from my need first. Yeah. Because when I do, and I have, and probably still do, it's always a disaster. Mm-hmm. It always ends up in some selfishly motivated action that miscommunicates, mm-hmm. and then she can't understand my position. Yeah. So how do you communicate when you need something to your spouse? Or do you just expect her to read no, your mind? I use language that we were trained in. It was not natural. It was not and natural. And it's not natural to what What I'm experiencing from you right now is... Mm-hmm. And what I would like to experience is. Or help me understand. Help me understand, right? Mm-hmm. So so those that language mm-hmm. was life saving. It saved me. Mm-hmm. Literally, because it's not natural in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I could hear someone watching or listening today when you talk about pursuing Darlene uh, Danielle mm-hmm. without your without a need. I'm not coming to you with a hook. I'm not trying to manipulate you mm-hmm. into some backdoor way of meeting mm-hmm. right. a need you have. But I could hear someone through a filter that may feel depleted mm-hmm. emotionally in a relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. They don't know how to do that because mm-hmm. they're so depleted. Mm-hmm. So I'm wanting them to hear tension. On one end, the tension is Lawrence is purely pursuing his wife with love without any sort of mm-hmm. selfish motive. 
But that's held in tension by a great ability to connect and to communicate. Mm-hmm. What I'm experiencing from you is this. Mm-hmm. Here's what I need is this. Mm-hmm. Help me understand this. I want people to hear you need both of those in place. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we're not asking you to ignore your needs yeah. and not communicate those right. needs. Correct. We're just asking you to make sure you're healthy enough mm-hmm. that your needs aren't subconsciously manipulating you mm. into how you choose to love this other person. Yeah. To sort well, of manipulate them into loving you back. Well, it That's goes good. back to a value. So what you're yeah. hearing in me is the value too. Yeah. Right. This is the value that's held. I don't want to be manipulated. Mm-hmm. I want to be me. I want to be free to be mm-hmm. me. And I've agreed to love this person. Right. And so what what happens if we take the example of Jesus going to the cross? Mm-hmm. The perfect example of love is to death. Jesus agreed and he didn't want to. Everyone who's ever read yeah. the story of Jesus, he submitted Mm-hmm. <clears throat> not wanting to, mm-hmm. would you take this cup from me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But not my will, but your will. He had to trust, mm-hmm. right? So I do have needs, and I and I don't want to ignore them, and I don't want anybody else to ignore them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say if that is you and you're struggling, right, mm-hmm. and you don't feel and you're in a vacuum and it's hard, go find someone you trust that can help you with some skills to mm-hmm. communicate that. Yeah. Right. Get help. If they're in a vacuum, Lance, I mean, think about it. Yeah. If they're in a vacuum and their needs are unmet and they don't know how to communicate, they have to have help. They do. And if you don't go get help, you're functioning in some level of independence. And it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to grab some of the concepts that we're talking about. Well, you can't grab them. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can't get them because I'm I'm depleted. Well, you become, you know, Leif Hedlund would talk about being a powerful orphan. Mm. (laughs) I've gotten tools, but I've not fundamentally dealt with the orphan heart. And so I'm a very powerful orphan. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to use these tools ultimately about me. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because orphans have no inheritance. They don't know how to do connection. They can't see community. They have no identity. They don't understand sibling, Mm -hmm. you know, brotherhood and sisterhood. So Mm -hmm. it it is a, a, a huge challenge. I remember one time when our oldest, Matthew, was getting married. Um, similar to you, I didn't want to do the wedding. I was going to be a dad or this or that. So I sat on the front row and they're exchanging vows. And I had this aha moment where I was never raising a son. I was raising a future father and a wow. future husband. And That's I just incredible. didn't see it when Matthew was yeah. young and through his teen years. Mm-hmm. I just didn't. I don't know why I didn't see it, but I didn't. I just thought, oh, I'm raising a son. I'm raising a son. I'm raising a son. Mm-hmm. Luke is benefiting from mm-hmm. that wisdom. Yeah. That I'm not raising a son. I'm raising a future father, a future employee, That's a future good. husband, a future this. It was another one of those emotional yeah. color glass blind moments where you see something different. Mm-hmm. And so it changes how you pursue people. You know, That's scripture right. says yeah. for this reason a man will leave his mm-hmm. father and mother to pursue his mm-hmm. wife. Pursue yeah. that significant other. I have to pursue mm-hmm. Darlene. Right. She needs to feel pursued, but I'm grateful that she's also wants to pursue me mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah. say, mm-hmm. hey, I don't hear you communicating your needs, but just freely tell me what they are. Yeah, that's I good. I want to help meet those. It, yeah. If you put that into practice, yeah. that's going to bring revelation to you. Oh, yeah. 100%. It, it'll, it, it just, I don't feel like it. Yeah. I'm going to ask it anyway. Yeah. Well, you've asked, you know, we've hit it around parenting stuff. I think what I'm picking up from our previous podcast and this one, yes, there are parenting skills, but so much of these parenting skills are rooted out of the marriage. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if this is how we're going to build a healthy relationship, then that, what of those things can I practice with my children? Come on. It's mm-hmm. different when they're 2 mm-hmm. versus 10 versus 16 mm-hmm. versus 18 versus 30 mm-hmm. or 31. But the skills are the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would look back and say in the early years, we were like the caregiver, a lot of nurturing, a lot of changing diapers, a lot of feeding yeah. them, a lot of carrying them around. Then we sort of moved into the cop phase. Mm-hmm. A lot of rules. <laughs> Clean your room. Stop hitting yes. your sister. Go lay down in your bed. When are you going to do the chore? When are you going to take out the Shit. garbage? When are you going to do this? Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then we sort of moved into, which we weren't prepared for, but in hindsight, I wish we could do it over. The coach. Yeah. About that 10, 11, probably oh. not 10, but 11, 12, 13, 14 for sure. Mm-hmm. They're finding independent voice. Totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We should have done better at coaching, yeah. of learning to ask good questions. Learning to listen, learning That's to right. guide. That's right. There are certain boundaries they wouldn't, we wouldn't allow them to cross, of course, right. but we would have given them more freedom. Now, with adult children, it's consulting. Totally. <laughs> totally. 
We talk about what they want to talk about, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. unless I see it as a major crisis. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. we'll bring it up. Yeah. Very, as a consultant right. would. That's like, right. I looked at your yeah. financial profit and loss sheet, and while you're not asking me this question, I'm going to give you some feedback. Yeah, yeah. you're on the verge of bankruptcy. That's right. <laughs> so, yes, there are times we look at a P&L sheet to our kids and say, you need, yeah. I, we need to talk about this. Right. But mostly, mm-hmm. it's being present with them in their lives, celebrating their achievements and mm-hmm. accomplishments. Mm-hmm. And being available when they need a, a wise voice. Yeah, yeah. That's, good. that's so good. That's I, so I good. do. I do appreciate that. I want to hear it. Okay, just want to circle. Yeah, back do that. You know, I, I think oh. from my experience as a parent of thirty-one years. We, wow, we've been parents a long time. Yes, you have. Um, and as a kids pastor, you know, I think living a life that's authentic in front of our kids. Whether that's mm. showing them how to have a good conversation mm-hmm. when we don't agree, but we're sharing values and we're seeking to understand, watch, letting them see us do that. Right. Um, that mm. the way we live inside our household that's right. is the same way we live outside the household, mm. particularly for those of us who are in the church. Mm-hmm. You don't you know? change to go to church? No <laughs> way you're the same person <laughs> in church that you are at home. There's no way. I love that. We, uh, that's the that's the goal. That's the goal is <laughs> to be as authentic. That's right. In our house. That's right. Wow. And outside the house. Wow. Because our kids are the ones who see that. Come on. No one else has the front seat like that's our right. kids do. That's right. Wow. To see, oh, so that's there's such a difference there. So why would I trust? Mm-hmm. Their level of trust will go down mm-hmm. when they see that difference. Mm-hmm. So. I just want you to clarify this again. So mm-hmm. what you're saying is that when your children don't see authenticity, you're literally training them not yes. to trust. Correct. Correct. That's my opinion. That's I. That and was, it's a good one. It's a good one. I love that. I was. Uh, I love that. Visiting a lady one time that was terminal with cancer during COVID, and I was curious about her spiritual history. Uh, it was important to her husband that that she received the Lord. She was going to pass away unless mm. it would have been a Lazarus type miracle had she. She, so obviously he wants her to receive the Lord. Well, in our conversation, what came out is that she was raised within a particular denomination, very church-going family, but at home, her parents were abusive to her. Wow. Whoa. And so her concept of God was connected not to the Sunday morning experience, but to the yeah. Monday through Saturday experience. Mm. And so a, a turn off to religion, a turn off to church, a turn off to God was natural. Mm-hmm. Because there was no consistency right. between the spiritual experience of a church and her parents and what she was actually experiencing mm-hmm. from her mom and dad at home. I know all of us could probably share stories of people mm-hmm. we've talked to like that, mm-hmm. or we've been that, unfortunately, to people. It's, you know, marriage and parenting, Ephesians 5 talks about, Paul gives this, instructions in marriage, but mm-hmm. but then he sort of really wraps it up with the main point, which mm-hmm. isn't about women being less than men mm-hmm. or men being chauvinistic and misogynistic. That has absolutely nothing to do with what Paul right. was suggesting. Exactly. What Paul, I think, was ultimately suggesting is the way husbands love wives and the way wives love husbands is the way Christ loves the church. That's right. mm-hmm. That our marriage is the greatest gospel witness we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the way we love each other is we're saying to anyone who's looking, this right. is the way Jesus loves all of humanity. Come on. That's a that's fact. This so is good. the way he loves yes. the church. So and if that's not authentic and real and messy and graceful mm-hmm. and merciful and just, mm-hmm. then we're not giving a fair picture mm-hmm. to others of mm-hmm. how that's Jesus right. really loves mm-hmm. humanity. That's right. That's right. And our parents, then our children, I mean, are the fruit of that. That's, that's so good. good. Mm-hmm. And so all of our relationships are the fruit of the way Christ loves us, as you guys so eloquently and passionately talk about, mm-hmm. becoming love, mm-hmm. becoming the love of God in the earth. Mm-hmm. And marriage is just one way which we can say to the world, this is one way that looks. That's good. Yeah. That's and good. if we're doing that authentically mm-hmm. in the home and outside the home, and our children are watching that, that's right. and we're showing them how you communicate about your needs, mm-hmm. our children have needs too. That's right. But so many children feel like I, my parents are not a safe place for me to take my needs to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but if if you're unified as parents, mm-hmm. you're demonstrating how do you communicate, how do I share what's inside my brain mm-hmm. with this person who loves me so much, mm-hmm. that skill mm-hmm. creates such a level of safety and security in our kids. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what you were talking about earlier of, mm-hmm. of when you see kids who who are demonstrating behaviors that look insecure. Right. 
you know, checking in on the parents to say, are you guys doing Well, we okay changed our right? parenting style because of Danny Silk when Matthew and Sarah Danny were Silk around 11 lives. or 12. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 came to us, they came to us one day and like, you keep giving us choices. Just tell us what to do. <laughs> it was so much easier when you yeah. would just tell us what to do. Because when we told them what to do, they could be mad at us. Right. Yeah, it's our fault it didn't work out. And when we're out. making them choose their own yeah, thing and that. communicate to they us what to they want. They have to take responsibility of their consequences. They were, you know, yeah. yes. I see better maturity within the body of Christ as we are coaching younger people, mm-hmm. coaching people in as a pastor, mm-hmm. of saying to them, what do you hear the Lord saying? Right. And yeah. how can I help hold you accountable, accountable. to that? Right. Yeah. That authenticity yeah. says, I don't want you like me. I am genuinely interested in who you say God says you are. And then what are we going to go do about that? I'm not changing the song. Right. Yeah. Right. That it, it, you have a, you, from, from that perspective, it's an authentic and genuine connection with the Lord that mm-hmm. you should have. And if you don't, I'm happy to help introduce you to that because mm-hmm. he's loving and he's really good mm-hmm. yeah, amen. at loving you. You've been around people at their death moments. We have too. Mm-hmm. I think one of the driving factors for the Babins and the Baines is we want to be surrounded by our children and, and grandchildren yes, in that no, moment. No doubt. That's right. And maybe, no fortunate, doubt. maybe we'll be fortunate enough to have spiritual children mm-hmm. around if mm-hmm. God were willing. We've been around families that don't have that. Right. There's toxicity, there's disconnection, there's bitterness yeah. that has yeah. broken it's these grievous. families. It is grievous because it's not the way of the Father. Mm-hmm. And it's a horrible witness to the world it is. of what, because God's yeah. kingdom is fundamentally family. Amen. So we want to stay connected to our kids at all costs. If there was anything we could do different, for me, mm-hmm. I won't speak for Darlene, I would have more emphasis on connection as a young dad. Mm -hmm. I was too driven by fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so I need my kids to line up to the rules because it helps me not be afraid. Versus me learning how to deal with my fear rather than expecting them to do that. And so I would go back and just figure out, how do I stay connected to Matthew, Sarah, and Luke over and over and over again Mm -hmm. every day, Mm -hmm. fighting for connection? I think that's the language of Danny Silk, keep your love on. That's right. It's changed for me over time. That's still true. But for me, my code book and what's resonating deeper is connection. Mm -hmm. is a willingness to pursue this other person Mm -hmm. because when connection is real and strong and trusted, life is just more enjoyable. Yeah. I just have better emotional days. That's right. right. And I'm more easily Mm -hmm. to overcome anxiety. It doesn't last as long in my life. Mm -hmm. And whatever difficulty we face, there's Mm -hmm. just a lot more confidence that we're going to be okay through this. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get over it. I love that. One of my favorite quotes, just kind of to sum up this, it was Mother Teresa said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. That's right. It's true. And I just love that. That has been one of the statements that have impacted my life is Mm -hmm. that is how you change the world. Can I give you an example? I remember. go for it. Again, I don't know if you felt this as pastors in the church, when you were pastoring in the church, there's this tension you feel of being available for everybody and they oh. all want to talk to you and oh. and we pay your salary, so I need your time <laughs> right. and your attention. That's fun too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a pastor said one time, he said, they were talking about parenting and pastoring in this tension. And he said, I've made a commitment that when I haven't done this well, well, but... Whenever my kids come to me in church mm-hmm. and need me, I will always pause who I'm talking to. That's so good. Because I'm a dad 24-7, and I'm a pastor for just a moment. That's right. Yeah. And I will stop whatever, excuse me, one second, and engage their child. Not to say, you're interrupting, you move on, I'll get to you later. No. Right. What do you need? You're important to me. I want to mm-hmm. listen. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can delay the need sure. till later. Sure. But I want you to feel heard. That's so and good. And I want you to feel seen because yeah. you're important to me. That's mm-hmm. so good. What does that then say to the church member mm-hmm. Who might just dismiss their child at the next business meeting? Mm. Well, I was going to tell you. And it's so this the same example of changing your family for me—that was yeah. one of the most powerful yeah. things. Of like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm a part-time pastor. I'm a full-time dad. I'm a full-time yeah. husband. Yeah, and so I've got yeah. to keep. And I'm a full-time Christian. Mm-hmm. And I'm a part-time <laughs> preacher. <laughs> so I've got to keep the main thing, the main thing, and That's make sure right. the priorities stay yeah, in the right order. Right. That's right. That's good. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. I think what you're experiencing right now is we're we're talking around uh, some core values that we believe uh, are important to the Lord. We've we've been talking about authenticity, unity, trust, the goals of what love looks like produced in us. Ultimately, what we want you to hear is God is love and He loves you, and His goal is to transform you into love. And so we invite you to join us. Remember, subscribe, hit the like button. We'd love for you to experience more of this content. We're going to be working more. Our friends are going to be with us. We're going to give you more content around this idea of what love looks like in in parenting, in marriage, and in the church.